PwC initiated four years ago uh, awards to the not-for-profit sector around the transparency of their reporting, both their uh, annual reports and also the information that they put up on the website and other information that they make available to their, to their stakeholders, uh, really as a way of promoting you know, full disclosure and clarity around the operations of the uh, organisations that, um, uh, that they um, uh, that, uh, uh, nominate for the, for the awards. And what did the jury think of the standard of reports from the award entrance? Generally, uh, uh, the standard was very high and improving. I, I, had, uh, I was able to, um, uh, to be on the panel uh, on the jury four years ago when they first started. And uh, even over the four-year period, I think there's been a really significant increase in the transparency of reporting, the amount of detail that's in the, uh, that's in the reports and the sort of information that's available to all of the stakeholders. What are some of the challenges that not-for-profit organisations are facing in becoming more transparent with their reporting? Well, look, I think it, it actually really matters, the, the way in which the um, uh, organisations report their operations and what they do and their strategies um, uh, are really significant. There are a number of very significant stakeholders. Uh, uh, obviously, the community that they serve, and in a number of cases, not-for-profit organisations are dealing with vulnerable people in the community and they need to have the confidence that the organisations that they're working with are ones that uh, make full disclosure of exactly what they do. For staff, um, uh, you know, staff want to work within organisations that, uh, uh, that uh, are transparent in, in all aspects. Um, the government and other funding sources for organisations are obviously a, another hugely significant uh, set of stakeholders for organisations. So um, uh, it, it is important, I think, for the sector itself to establish a reputation for, for really decent disclosure. I, I suppose the two principal areas where um, we felt that there could continue to be some improvement were in the area of the overall social impact uh, of the, of the organisation. Um, uh, so that you're not just measuring uh, inputs and outputs, but you're actually measuring whether an organisation over a period of time has made a, a tangible difference to the issue that they're dealing with. So, for example, if the issue is youth homelessness, well, you know, what's happened to youth homelessness and has it uh, declined over that period of time? If it's uh, working in the area of medical research, well, you know, what's actually been achieved in that, uh, in that period of time towards the long-term goal? It's well known that for many not-for-profit organisations, time, money and resources are precious. So why do you think it's so important that they use the resources they have to improve the transparency of their reporting? Well, look, I think it shows that it's a pretty good investment. Um, uh, uh, certainly for smaller organisations um, that are strapped for financial resources, uh, I can understand why they would question that. I mean, our experience on the jury was that you know, relatively, relatively small organisations with relatively modest budgets um, uh, can actually be, be very effective in presenting information uh, in a very transparent way. You know, this is not rocket science. Um, it is presenting information that's available to organisations. Um, uh, these are reports that have to be prepared anyway. Most organisations have a, an internet presence and, uh, and have a site. So 95% uh, of, the, of the work is actually done. Uh, we're really talking about uh, making sure that the information that is available to all of the stakeholders is actually uh, up there uh, and, 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 and available for easy access. You and your family have long been associated with philanthropy and are preeminent philanthropists here in Australia. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Maya Family Company and how it promotes giving among wealthy Australians? Well, look, the, the Maya Family Company uh, has a business called uh, MF Philanthropic Services and we promote amongst our clients uh, giving. Um, uh, that is, we work with families as to how they can develop uh, cogent giving strategies. Um, we work through the establishment of uh, uh, private ancillary funds or other philanthropic giving entities uh, if they wish to uh, establish those. And we work on prioritising uh, research uh, and grant making uh, in the strategic areas that uh, are, are identified by, uh, by our clients. I mean, one of the things I find interesting is that you know, quite often it's said, oh, you know, there's no culture of giving in Australia, which is something that I don't accept at all. Um, there's actually a very, very strong tradition of, uh, of giving in Australia, and it really goes back uh, you know, over uh, two centuries. Um, I mean, just in the visual arts alone, you think of the elder bequest in South Australia, you think of the 
power uh, bequest in Sydney, uh, in Canberra for the National Gallery of Australia, you think of the Poynton bequest, and of course the National Gallery of Victoria, the Felton bequest. Now each of those in its own terms and at, and its own time, you know, was hugely significant and demonstrates that over a very long period of giving, um, uh, you know, there has been um, uh, this sort of pattern of quite, um, uh, quite uh, uh, generous, uh, uh, very generous acts. You say that there's quite a strong culture of giving in Australia, but recent research by Philanthropy Australia and QUT has shown that high net worth individuals here seem to be far less generous than our international counterparts. Do you think that's the case? Yeah, look, I, I do, and I think the, the observation that I would make is that um, uh, generally Australians are generous, and uh, I think uh, you know, not enough is made of the huge response that's given to uh, bush, bushfire appeals and Good Friday appeals and uh, you know, a whole lot of things that go on in the community sector that many people never hear of. I mean, Australians are generous by, by nature. Um, however, at the high, um, high net worth uh, category, um, Australians are, uh, of high net worth are not as generous uh, as their international counterparts. Um, the percentages are significantly less. And that suggests that after a certain income level or after a certain amount of wealth has been created, um, the actual giving part of it tends to be static, with, of course, some, um, uh, some exceptional um, uh, acts of, uh, of, of philanthropy that, uh, that have occurred. So do you think those people who do give generously should be willing to be more openly recognised and celebrated for that? Well, look, I think that's partly the case, that... Um, um, I don't think we've done a particularly good job of recognising the very significant acts of philanthropy that, ha that have occurred. And, you know, the nature of our, of our federation is, you know, very often a significant uh, act of benefaction in Sydney is not known in Brisbane, in Brisbane is not known in Adelaide, in Melbourne is not known uh, somewhere else. So w we tend to know about these things perhaps a, a little bit locally, but not broadly. Um, uh, so, you know, one way is perhaps <coughs> greater recognition for, for various acts that have taken place. But, but very often, you know, people who make significant contributions are, are not actually seeking the limelight. In fact, um, you know, far, far from it. They're very happy to get on in a very material way with what they're, uh, with what they're doing. Um, but uh, the organisations that are, uh, that are served by them uh, and that receive their support, you know, are obviously hugely appreciative for the... Uh, uh, for the work that's being done on their behalf. The other point I'd make is that, um, you know, I've talked in these remarks about individual giving, but there is a, a formal philanthropic sector um, where there are trusts and, and foundations that have been set up for some generations and in, in many cases, uh, um, you know, over 100 years. Uh, and that sector uh, you know, works away at, at making very significant grants uh, and, um, and, ha and has been doing so for, for a very long time. The, the reaction... Uh, is often either uh, to completely ignore those acts or otherwise the other extreme is huge sycophancy um, and neither is, is, the right, uh, is the right approach. What else can be done to help build more of a giving culture among high net worth individuals here in Australia? Look, I, I'm surprised, uh, for example, at the National Gallery of Australia, um, uh, the number of people that I run into, very substantial collectors uh, who have been collectors for a long time, uh, and who receive very good financial advice, who seem to be unaware of some of the existing programs that the government has for gifting works of art to cultural institutions. Uh, there are some very good programs around. The Cultural Gifts Program is the one I'm referring to in this, uh, in this context where you know, collectors are able to gift works of art uh, to collecting institutions around the nation. Um, uh, they receive a full tax deduction for the value of the, of the works, there's no capital gains tax assessable on the value uh, of, the, of the increase in the value of the works that they might have enjoyed, uh, and the deductions are, are able to be taken over a five-year period. Now, you know, there's a bit of knowledge that you have to have about uh, a program like that, so greater amplification of some of the existing programs, I think, is a, is a very important start to that. There is also an emphasis in the legislation that hugely advantages um, those who wish to give you know, while they're alive, and there are great incentives to do that. But if it's your preference to uh, establish a bequest and uh, 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 arrange for uh, your assets to uh, generate income in perpetuity, there are a, a whole series of disadvantages to you in, uh, in doing that. Uh, and I think that's one of the areas that 
Harold Mitchell will be looking at in the review that he's just been um, appointed to, uh, to do by the uh, Minister for the Arts, Simon Crean. You mentioned the Australian National Gallery, of which you're a chairman, and you're also an avid contributor to the arts here. Are you saying that you think the philanthropic and private sectors need to play a greater role in promoting the arts? Well, look, I think uh, there are uh, obviously a number of, of arts organisations across the whole, whole spectrum that are very sophisticated in the way that they talk to the philanthropic sector, to corporates and to prospective benefactors. And I think, you know, generally the message is getting out there. I mean, I just make the observation that uh, some of the programs that do already exist, like the Cultural Gifts Program, you know, uh, I think would benefit from either greater amplification, from greater amplification than they, than they presently get, just to make sure that uh, all collectors are aware that they can actually um, support institutions in, in that way. Obviously, there are many generous people in Australia who aren't necessarily wealthy. Do you think that these people should provide an incentive for more wealthy Australians or high net worth individuals to adopt a culture of giving? Very often, you know, very generous acts of benefaction that are made by, by uh, people that, that are not high worth individuals. And frankly, you know, they make the example to the, to the, rest, of the, um, uh, to the rest of the population about you know, what, what true generosity is. And, uh, you know, reflecting on, on that, I think, is, uh, is something that really you know, should encourage high net worth individuals to consider very carefully you know, what their opportunity is and you know, the pleasure that they might get in supporting organisations across a whole lot of different formats.